This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to tackle a topic that I actually found on the Avid Editors of Facebook. And it's one of those topics that kind of gets people really riled. And that's the topic of vertical video. Now, in the post that I had read, someone had said that they needed to do a project using vertical video and everyone kind of, you know, got on their case. Oh, vertical video, that's not the way, you know, things are done, et cetera, et cetera. But what's important to keep in mind is that especially with the move to make content more and more for mobile devices, especially for applications like Snapchat, you are going to be required to provide them with a vertical video, a video that could potentially be 1080 by 1920, meaning 1080 wide by 1920 high instead of the other way around. So in the next couple of lessons, what I thought I would do is take you through the entire process from start to finish, how you're going to set up a project, how you're going to get your media in, set up your media for the vertical project, set up the clips in your timeline, and how you're then going to export it to then take it and flip it to whatever type of deliverable file that you're going to need. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And our journey to our vertical project starts as always with the project selection window. We need to get in and create a custom project for us to work on. But what we also want to do is to create a template that we can use moving forward for any future Snapchat videos that we might need to make. So let's head over to the new project window. And many people think that I'm going to drop this down and come down to the custom option here to get in and create a custom project. But I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to come down here to the Manage Presets options. Once I say Manage Presets, you'll see that I've already created a preset for Snapchat right here. It is 1080 by 1920 at 1 to 1.78 aspect ratio at 23,976 frames per second. Now I could get in if I knew I wanted to create one for, you know, 59,94. Maybe I want to create one for 60 frames per second. You know, we could get in and create all of our custom presets in one shot so that when we say OK, and we navigate back up here to my presets, we'll actually have access to all of them right up here. So what I'm going to do is to select our Snapchat preset. And I'm gonna call this one Snapchat 1080 by 1920, just so that we know exactly what it is that we are dealing with. I'm gonna say okay, and let's now launch the project. Now, once the project has opened, you'll see a bin has been created, but what's also been created here is my super high composer windows that we're not going to need to be that high and I'm not going to need the timeline to be that big either. We're just going to be using a few clips to create our sequence. Now of course the next step is we need to get some media to work with so let's do that. I'm going to right click, we're going to come to the source browser, I'm going to come to my media folder and let's just take some clips from this basketball footage that I have here. Now this is all Apple ProRes. I'm going to select it all and we don't want to import it, we want to link to it. Now once I click link to, you'll see those clips have now immediately appeared inside of the bin that I have selected down here as the target bin. I'm just going to close the source browser. And the problem that we're going to have right off the bat, you'll see as we start double clicking, is that my footage is ridiculously stretched. And this is not what we want. We're going to need to get in and to format this footage so that it is cropped off inside of the preview and inside of our timeline as well. All right, so let's come to our first clip. I'm just going to right click. We're going to come to the source settings and we're going to head over to the frame flex option. Now you're going to see that the current image size 
is 1920 by 1080 with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 and a pixel aspect ratio of 1 to 1. Now, with our frame flex's frame aspect ratio, it's not going to be 16 by 9. It's actually going to be the reverse of that. So what I'm going to do is come down to custom, and we're going to set this custom aspect ratio to be 9 to 16. Once I say OK, you'll now see that the frame flex window exactly matches that of our frame. OK. You'll see that I can position things just to get them roughly where I need them to go inside of the source settings window. And once I'm happy with that, I'm simply going to say apply and you're going to notice that that clip gets updated immediately in the preview window. Now you're going to notice the quality is not that great and that's because I don't have it set to be the best quality. But now much like any other clip, I can hit play. We now have some vertical video going on of this clip. It's looking pretty good and it's all set to go on our timeline. Now of course the issue we still have is that all these clips here are not set up the way that we need them. But what I like about working with my source settings is I can select multiple clips, right click, come to source settings. Inside of frame flex, we're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did, come down to custom. We're gonna set it to be nine by 16, okay? And what we're gonna do now is, I'm just gonna position this one roughly where I want it to go. Now he's going to be slam dunking, so I'm just going to set it in an arbitrary place just for the purposes of what we're doing. And instead of saying apply, I'm just going to say apply to all. I can now say OK, and all of these clips now look exactly the way that they should. OK? So let's take a couple clips and let's drop them in. Now I've got a clip here of our guy slam dunking this ball. This is looking pretty good, actually. OK? He sort of starts off frame, which I don't necessarily mind. We're going to bring him up to about there before we cut to our actual slam dunk shot that's going to be, let's take this shot. Now it's a little bit off centered, not exactly where I'd like it to be. Now, of course, this guy's wearing the actual wrong outfit here. Now, do I have one? That's a little bit better, perfect. That guy's wearing red right there. Okay, so we'll take it to right about the rim. That's looking good. Let's have the slam happening, okay? He's about to drop off. So let's actually take our shot here. We'll just extend it down until he drops off the net. Perfect. Okay, and this can pretty much make up most of our shot here. So right when he gets to about there, we're going to drop this in. Okay, he comes in, cut to the close-up, boom, hanging. Now we want to have him right before he drops down, which is right about there. Okay, good. Okay, now, if at any time I needed to get in and make any modifications to this shot, let's say, for example, I wasn't exactly happy with the framing of this. I want to slide him over just a little bit. Well, all I need to do is to step into effects mode. Now my shortcut, Shift and Y on the keyboard, of course, if you have it mapped, you can head to your shortcut. And you'll notice that we now have the frame flex window right here that we can take and just adjust like that, okay? Now you'll notice a keyframe has been added to the timeline. I can actually just take that and remove it. And once I step out, this shot has now been reframed, all set to go. So basically what we've done is created a video for Snapchat. Now what's important to keep in mind is if I needed to get in and add some titles to this, we have to use new BlueFX's Titler Pro because the title tool and the marquee tool would not be supported in this situation. So keep that in mind. All right, so I think that's a good place to leave off in this lesson. What I'd like to do coming up in the next lesson is I wanna backtrack just a little bit to talk about the process that we would go through if we wanted to get in and transcode these clips as opposed to working with them as link to media. Then we're gonna move on to talk about exporting these clips and then we're gonna quickly jump into Adobe's Media Encoder to take these files, shrink them down so they'll be ready to send to Snapchat or whoever the end provider happens to be. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, Use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.